With their tanks and their mortars and the screaming of their German aeroplanes. Their machine guns and their snipers, their shells and bullets fell on us like rain. I set my rifle to my shoulder and assembled some of the exhausted men. I saw Jock Cunningham was doing the same and we joined our forces then. I said sing up my lads and the internationally it rang out. Men lying by the wayside got up and steered and fell in with a shout. The window has been erected to commemorate the support given by local men and women to the working class cause in Spain. Spanish Civil War broke out in 1936. Franco and his people were immediately supported by Hitler and Mussolini. And so trade unionists, labour people, communists, they were looking at this situation and said, if we don't intervene now, there's the danger of it, that everything escalating and we could end up in another world war. So the, the window is important. It's a uh, hopefully a permanent memorial in the Belfast City Hall to the fact that you know working people of both traditions here came together through the labour movement to fight against fascism. Around 320 Irish volunteers fought against Franco's forces as members of the 15th International Brigade. Of those, 48 were born in Belfast, 12 of whom died in Spain. The Spanish Civil War became for many an opportunity to stand against the growth of fascism with men and women from all over the world answering the call uh, to defend democracy and their counterparts in Spain. basically describing the um, men from different sides of the community sort of overcoming their local politics to come together under the banner No Pastoran and to fight against fascism. Um, so in the window you can see them coming uh, from two sides and the sort of working class terraces on either side. We've indicated that they're coming from two sides by showing the Black Mountain and one side and the sort of industrial backdrop and the other side indicating east and west Belfast. The central image in it is for, it's the fact of, you know, a group of men marching off to war. There's an element of symbolism attached to that there is that there's 12 shadows attached to that sort of marching column. And the 12 shadows represents the 12 men from Belfast who died in Spain. The other sort of key symbols in it, I mean, obviously with the city hall just to represent the building that we're in and the fact that the, the, the volunteers were from this area. There is the three-pointed star, which is the sort of generic symbol for the international brigades and the sort of the PUM and the other related um, anti-fascist groups. Um, and then there's a sort of a ribbon effect going around the edges of the, of the, of the, the window, which names a number of the major battles. And in every one of those battles, some Irish, Irish volunteers died. I lived in Gent Street of Canberra and as a boy I used to sleep in the back bedroom because my two older sisters plus my brother was sent up country because of the war so I seen the bombs drop as a boy though I was only two could not see but I still seen them I could understand war and as I say, there was a, a, a photograph on the wall and I said to my mum, who's that? And she says, that's Harry. I says, Harry who? She says, your uncle Harry. And he was killed on the Ebo River. He fell along with five others on that last battle. My father was Joe Boyd, uh, who was one of the first two volunteers to leave Belfast. He wasn't actually a combatant, he was an ambulance driver. He was on the Toledo front and he heard people crying and he just couldn't ignore it and he drove his field ambulance in to pick up wounded off both sides. When he went in the fascist shot up the wheels of his field ambulance, uh, took him prisoner along with Fred McMahon from Cliftonville, his co-driver. Jim Hohey from Lurgan, who uh, fought in Spain with the International Brigade. 
fought in the final battle of on the Ebro, during which time he was uh, captured by the enemy. Eventually, at the end of the war, the prisoners were all deported, and in his case, he was deported to Canada and worked there for um, a period. And when World War Two, uh, you know, began, he did he joined up again and fought in the uh, Royal Canadian Air Force and was based back in England and uh, flew from England against uh, um, German uh, U-boats over the, uh, uh, the Bay of Biscay and eventually uh, lost his life in September 1943, I think it was, in, uh, in uh, an accident. It's just amazing. It has special resonance for me because I have my three grandchildren here, my, my father, three of my father's great-grandchildren, the youngest who is only one. And um, it's very important to me that uh, they know what a great city Belfast is. I can really hardly believe it because when I was growing up in the 1950s, the fact that my family weren't orange and that they weren't green was such an oddity. We were ostracised and the fact now that I can hear all the applause, that all these people are recognising it. They went and they fought but they didn't have the training and they didn't have the proper gear but they still fought and they held on and they won battle after battle. But, as I say, towards the end, it was just them and everybody else against them. Because you had Mussolini's black shirts, Mussolini's tanks, Mussolini's guns, Hitler's airplanes. Everybody was fighting against these men. They went in very arduous circumstances to fight against the fascists. And, you know, we always have to be aware of um, you know what can happen if you let the fascists win in the world because obviously you know World War two then uh, you know um, occurred and um, you know the, had, had they won possibly history may well have been different it's not just a case of remembering those people it's why they went because sad to say today you know, ranging from Ballymena to parts of North Belfast, we're getting racist petrol bombings of houses. There's homophobia, there's inequality, there's poverty, there's sex discrimination. There's a whole heap. And when Bob Doyle was here in 2006, 2007, he said, you know, don't just commemorate us old people, you know, the, us, the fallen soldiers. You have to take on board what they were doing and they were fighting for equality, fighting against injustice. And if we can inspire a younger generation, to, to take up that struggle, the more the merrier. So here's to Frank Ryan and all his Irish comrades, to the Connolly Column and all the international brigades, to the brave men and women and all those who fought the fascist tide. You are history, you are legend, and your sacrifice fills my heart with pride.